What is up, Nerf Nation? I'm Naptown Nerf, and this is a review of my Exus 2. So this review is just going to be an initial review, basically on the shell here of the Exus 2. And then uh, I have done some internal modifications, obviously, because you just get the shell. So I have actually put a little special uh, brass breech in there. I'll go over the internals more in detail when I post my mod overview of this and there'll be a full paint job on this and everything. So this is basically just a review on the shell and kind of what I think about it. Yeah, let's talk about the obvious. This thing looks amazing. Definitely a really cool looking shell. I think it's price point is very good. Uh, I think it's still going for about $65 plus shipping on eBay. So I think that's a pretty good price point. I mean, considering just for a pump grip for a long shot, you're looking at you know, close to 50 bucks. So I think that you're gonna, you're getting a lot for your money right here. And then you also get the Picatinny rail and the really cool sleek shell. And I really like how small and compact everything is about this shell. It comes with a really cool mag release. The mag release on the stock long shot is up here. Not great unless you modify it. And that obviously is gonna be extra time and an extra cost to get a 3D printed part or what have you to get something similar to this. So this is really nice and it comes completely stock. You get a pretty cool adjustable stock just like the long shot. I would like it a bit longer, but honestly, I don't think it's too bad. I really, I mean, I'm not a huge person. It's not terrible at full extension there. That's the full length of it there. But I do think it would have been nice to have it a little bit longer, you know, maybe a few inches longer, at least that ability to have it a few inches longer. But that's just my opinion. I think a few other people have mentioned that also, but uh, I don't think it's terrible. I do like the comfort of the stock. It's very nice and easy to shoulder. It's not too big. I like that. It's a lot smaller than the stock long shot stock. So a few of the negatives that I found when putting this together. First off, when I tried to install the pin into the bolt sled that came with this, which uh, is a plastic nylon I believe is the material it actually cracked when I was just putting this the bolt into it and I was being very careful you have to you obviously you don't want to smash it sideways because it's not meant to take pressure on the sides but it couldn't take really any sort of pressure now to the positive side of the story I mentioned this to the jet X people and they immediately just without me even asking for a new one they just said we're gonna send you a new one and they have it just arrived yesterday so I'm hopeful to put that in here and test it out and give you guys a little more of an opinion on the actual bolt sled and how much force it can take. It's supposed to be able to take 16 kilograms, which is what is in this long shot. I have a Nerf Turf 16 kilogram spring in here. It is very, very beefy. And I'll be very, very surprised if it can hold up to that. But from what I've been told, it is supposed to. So I will definitely be putting that through its paces and really would have to test that over some time to give you guys an honest opinion on how well it holds up. So. Even if I put it in here at Primes and it's fine for a couple shots, that doesn't mean it's going to hold up over, you know, a long period of time. So when I find out more information about that, I will get back to you. So this is a look at the bolt sled that comes with it. It is very, very similar to the normal long shot bolt sled, except it does not have a tail. The normal stock long shot bolt sled will not work in this kit because of that tail. Now, if you cut it off, it may work. I'm not sure. I have not tested that. But in theory, it should work if you cut the tail off the stock long shot bolt sled. That should work too. So the uh, one I originally got just snapped just right here in the front, just on that little piece of plastic. So it's pretty thin right there, and it just broke right there. And I do believe it also has a joint there where they join the two sides together. It, I don't know. It looks like it. There's like a line there. So I could see that being a weak point now. That's not normally where bolt sleds break. Uh, that would be if it's getting pressure this way, and that really would only happen, I think, is if you're pressing on it or if you're trying to insert that pin. Obviously, you do need to be able to insert that pin without it breaking, uh, so hopefully I'm able to do that this time around. So the other thing that's a slight negative is I actually, when I installed this part, which is a pretty cheap part, but it's nice that they throw this in. I do like it, and you know I think it's good that they added this to the kit, but it actually cracked, and it's hard to see because for whatever reason, this outer diameter was a bit too fat or this was a little bit too thin. I don't know, the tolerances weren't right. And when I put it on, it actually just cracked 
uh, right under there. I don't know if you can see that. So it's a bit hard to see orange on orange there. Maybe I can take it off and you can see it better. Uh, probably not because it actually closes up there, but yeah, it just cracked a little bit. I mean, it's not a huge deal. It still fits on there and stays on there. A little bit weird, I thought, since this is their barrel and this is their muzzle attachment that that didn't work well, but you know, it is what it is. Not too big a deal. You're not really going to see it, so it's not a huge deal, but just thought I should be mentioned. At least with my model, the shell lines up really, really well. There's only a slight little bit of a difference right here, and I mean, that's really, really minor and nitpicky. The shell is very, very nicely put together. It goes together really easily. Like, I've had to take this apart quite a few times to get the internals right, and it's pretty easy to take apart, put back together. Everything fits in there nicely. There wasn't anything like you had to hold anything together to get it together or anything like that. Everything fits in there really well. I know artifacts pieces don't really work well with this. Like the, I bought an artifact trigger and it does not work in this blaster. I'm sure you can modify the shell to make it work, but I didn't really want to do that. And you also, I know you have to modify it to put in the artifact hunter kit a little bit, but it will work. I kind of understand that they don't really probably care too much that it works with these other brands because they're trying to market their own brand and they want you to buy their internals once they come out. So I kind of get that. Like it's not that big a deal to me that those don't work perfectly. It is nice that you can modify this to make it work, but I mean, us modders can really make almost anything work with a certain amount of modification. So that should be noted that certain pieces that you buy from Artifact or maybe other companies may not be compatible with this kit without modification. The grip is super, super comfortable, guys. I mean, I just love this grip. It is so nice. It is really, really nice. The mag release is really, really nice. Now, it would have been nice that if I could have reached it with my finger, like you might be able to if you have really long fingers, but that's pretty, pretty good reach there. This, is, I thought was a bit short, but I haven't really had too much issue with it. I'd really have to play with it quite a bit to tell you if that's a problem, but I think it's fine. I haven't really had too much issue. I'm gonna go ahead and load a magazine in here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and stick this, my one of my worker mags. It looks really awesome, like that thing. That just looks cool. Close it shut there, and uh, I'll go ahead and fire it off a few times. It's a little bit tricky since uh, this thing has quite a bit of power. I can't just shoot it at a wall like I can most of my blasters, so I'm gonna try something a little different. All right, I'm about probably five feet away from this box and I'm just gonna fire it at the box. That is a full length prototype dart, by the way, right through there. Hopefully it doesn't go through my couch. Do another one. That is powerful. <laughs> Let's see what that did. There you go. Right through the other side too. That is some power. Okay, I'm gonna Shoot some half link darts. These are just cut down prototype darts. So the same darts just cut down. And uh, this is a artifact magazine. It's pretty cool and it works just fine in here. So as you can tell, that primes really nicely. It's very smooth prime. 16 kilograms is about the most, in my opinion, that's practical for a long shot. I mean, you might be able to go a tad bit more than that, but at some point, it just is so hard to prime that it's kind of pointless and the darts are just gonna go crazy anyway. So I feel like that's a good level. Obviously, whatever your internals are are gonna depend on performance, so I'm not really gonna measure FPS or anything like that right now. I will do that when I do my mod overview, but as a shell, I think it's really, really cool. I know people have talked about the tolerances being a little loose. Now, there is a little wobble there. Now, I actually think that's a really good thing, especially for this part, because when you add paint to this, it's gonna increase the thickness a little bit. So it's nice to have that little bit of tolerance there so you can allow for your paint buildup and you won't have any issues you know, scraping your paint off when you're priming and stuff like that. So I like that. I don't have any problem with this. Now, one thing I do want to show you. So with the magazine in here, there is quite a bit of wobble there. Um, I think that's a bit more than I would like. It's wobbly pretty, that's pretty bad. And when you're running around, that might get a little annoying. So I think that tolerance could be a little bit tighter, a little better. So I don't know. That's a slight knock, but not anything major in my opinion. And obviously when you add paint, 
your the inside isn't going to build up nearly as much as the outside because you'll just probably put a base coat on the inside. You know, they, I, they might have allowed that for paint buildup also, but that's probably a little too much in my opinion. The Picatinny rails on my model line up really, really nicely. The thicknesses are very consistent and they do work very well with the attachments that I have for Picatinny. I'll go ahead and throw one on there. So I have this really sweet knockoff EOTech sight here that can just slide right on and go wherever I want. You know, it's fine. No worries. You can go anywhere and I can lock it down. So it's on there really, really nicely and it's not going anywhere. Really, really cool. It's a really sweet sight and I will be doing a review on this site here pretty soon. Uh, so look forward to that. So I think that this is a winner. I think it's a really, really nice shell. Really, really set up nicely to put a lot of power into it. Really looking forward to the JetX kits that are coming out. I know the Alpha kit is just about ready to be released. It is a Stefan or short link dart firing breech. They also have a universal breech that is supposed to be coming out that shoots long and short darts. I'm really excited about that. That is definitely something that I'll think about purchasing at the right price point. And then the, I think it's the Omega Breach. I could be wrong on these names, but it is basically the Alpha Kit, but is all metal or mostly metal. I'm not exactly sure, but it is a like a stronger, more beefy version of the Alpha Kit. So that's pretty cool too. And I uh, can't wait for those kits to come out. They look really, really intriguing. But, you know, it's always neat to build your own brass breach. And obviously that is... Kind of old school and fun to do also and that's what i decided to do since those kits had not been released yet so i'm really excited about what is to come with this blaster look forward to a hopefully pretty sweet paint job if i ever get a good day to do it and jet x i really want to give them a big shout out i think they've come a long way since they first started their customer service has gotten much better they sent me without even telling me they sent me catch springs that didn't originally come with this so i assume now they come with these beefier catch springs because I think they need to be a little bit shorter than the normal long shot catch springs because of how this stock dips down here and it's not quite as high as the normal long shot. So it was nice that they sent those to me. And then they also, like I said, sent me a brand new bolt sled because mine broke and didn't ask me any questions. Just was like, oh, we'll send you a new one, no problem. And I, that was awesome. I. I think it, they're a really cool company and uh, I look forward to what they're going to come out with in the future. So with that, I just want to say thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this initial review of the Exus 2 by JetX. And please subscribe if you're not subscribed. Check out my Patreon. Link will be next to me here to the left. And as always, peace out guys.